All right, everybody. It's now uh, July 18th. It's about 9.04 p.m. in the evening. July 18th, 2012. Reality Supreme Being, also known as HRM Cesar San Agustin de Buenaparte. Me and my twin are known by many, many names. All right, I have here a letter, which was delivered to me after I finished recording the first two, three-part episode of videos about all the problems and the complexities of my life and being forced to live in this country, being forced to have to stay here, being forced to uh, have my property taken from me, my possessions over and over again, my cars, my trucks, my boats towed away. I mean, you know, I can go on and on. Storage, etc., evidently, is really showing their muscle. They're pissed off. Enough for their district manager, Adam Hattenberg, to lie. This is their letter here that, they, that the manager gave me. And I'm about to read it to you. Now, Mr. Larry Cody has paid the rent on that storage. And he has a bad back, so I'm helping him. And he's helping me. And as it turns out, <coughs> regardless of what their excuses are, let me read this letter to you. Uh, it's to Mr. Larry Cody and his unit F006. Mr. Cody, on Monday, July 9th, the contents of your space, F006, located at 11111 Deering Avenue, Canoga Park, was left outside in our driveway aisle, blocking access to our emergency fire exit. Our tenant units, your alternate contact, Chaz, was moving items around during this time and assured us that he would move back into the space by the end of the day, which I did. I had to take the stuff back out at 6 in the morning because it was just all thrown in there. He was verbally warned that day to remove the items off the property or put them inside the space. On 710 and 711, he was warned again, and we left you multiple voicemails starting, they're saying they left Larry, multiple voice, voicemails stating that the items had to be removed or you would be evicted from the property. Now, Larry just moved in uh, in the beginning of July, and uh, we're moving the stuff back in, but there was a lot of stuff, and we don't have a truck. We informed them of that. Actually, they're lying on this letter. Larry said he never received any recordings, no multiple vo voice recordings of any kind. So uh, uh, item number one, Mr. Hattenberg, a district manager, is lying. Uh, item number two, on July 14th and 15th and 16th, Chaz was told that he was not allowed on the property unless he was moving items back into the space, which I was. Uh, they took the codes out so we couldn't get in easily. And uh, he, uh, we have continued to call you and make requests that these items be removed, but we have been ignored. Wrong. I was on the phone with the Vice President, Chris Lyons, on the 10th and the 11th. So this letter is not only is it inaccurate, the, the tape recording of Mr. Chris Lyons' discussion with me is available in court or any place else and to any authorities that might be involved in this because there was no blocking of any fire exit. As a matter of fact, I'm very well versed in a lot of codes because they have been used against me unfairly. And I could get storage, et cetera, into a lot, a lot of trouble, including big fines, not only from Building the Safety, but from the fire department and many other different places from the information I have. I mean, they want to play rough. I can play rough. These in the, he goes on to say in black italicis, says are these incidents directly violate the terms and conditions of your rental agreement, and this serves as a, an eviction notice. The specific rental agreement contains uh, you violated include or not limited to the following access. An owner's sole discretion, owner's access to premises may be, continue, may be conditioned in any manner deemed reasonably necessary by owner to maintain order and protect security on the premises. They haven't protect security on the premises. There are issues that I could make public on YouTube right now, which I will withhold because of other people. Uh, uh, and my respect for other people there, the tenants and employees, I will reserve such comments until some future date where I am con we are continually threatened until something is worked out. Such measures may include or are not limited to limiting hours of operation, requiring vac vac 
uh, ver verification of owner's occupant's identity, how many times you have to show your driver's license, and require an occupant to sign in and out upon entering and leaving the premises. Another rule number seven, owner shall have the right from time to time to establish and change hours of operation or to propagate amendments and make additional rules and regulations. This is unconscionable. Uh, for the safety, care, and cleanliness of the premises, let me tell you, that premises is really dirty. I've taken a lot of pictures. There's all kinds of grit and dirt all over the asphalt. There's cracks in the concrete. One of my friends who rented a tenant moved out because there's a huge, which I've taken pictures of, a huge a uh, big space in front of the storage where his appliances fell down from the hand truck that he was pulling them in and out because of the big huge hole in front of this so-called storage unit which is in another aisle. Uh, so the premises of preservation in good order. Occupant agrees to follow all owners rules now in effect or may be put into effect from time to time. Now they claim here that they have documented the above occur occurrences and that the corresponding digital video and, and digital photo records that indicate the same. These photo records obviously are going to be doctored and they are not accurate in any way. They are doctored and they are doctored to view them and be interpreted in their favor. We haven't seen the video documents by the way. Neither has Larry. We are hereby ordered, you are hereby ordered to remove all items from storage F006. By the way, that's paid for until the end of the month by 4 p.m. on Thursday, July 19, 2012 to prevent legal action to remove all items of storage from, he doesn't say whether it's from the unit inside or outside. He means to vacate the unit. You may not access the property other than during scheduled office hours and for no other purpose than to remove items from unit F006. Uh, you will be escorted to the storage unit. Employee will be present during the removal of your items. You have no right to be on the property after July 18th, 2012. Any future visit to the property will be considered harass, trespassing, and the police will be contacted immediately. Adam Hattenberg, district manager. Now, I warn you, Chris Lyons, vice president of storage, et cetera, that this can turn into something very ugly that you people are fueling. I'm not fueling it. Larry Cody is not fueling it. And no one that we will help us work with Larry is fueling any of this. You people are fueling it and you're violating and interfering and impeding the uh, the uh, contract agreements I have with my clients and any uh, power of attorney that I have with people, other tenants that are renting there. Now, um, it's seven minutes into this video. You have a choice to either listen to this video and understand that I'm using it as blackmail. You're blackmailing us. You're saying, you know, we have to be out of there by tomorrow at 4 o'clock. That's impossible. That's a 10 by 30 unit. It is full. And there is no way that that can be moved without the help of a truck. Mr. Lyons, vice president, said they could make available a truck, but the rules and regulations involving getting that truck are so loaded with consternation and contradictions that there's no way we could be out of there by 4 o'clock on Thursday because we'd have to hire a full work crew of about 10 people to remove everything before 4 o'clock. And we don't have that kind of money. So see, what I told you earlier in my other videos, these people are evil, plain outright evil. Like every other American citizen that pays taxes, you give them a badge, you give them authority, and you give them your sign a contract, and then they think that they can just throw anything at people and violate their rights as well. Well, there's such a thing as an unconscionable contract, and Storage Etc. has an unconscionable contract, and 300 people have signed that contract. At least one-third of the people have been late on their rent this month paying, and I have documented evidence of that. So this can turn into a huge class action lawsuit, which we will contact every one of those one-third of the tenants to see if they want to add their name and if they have any other gripes against this storage, etc. Now, we can take it further. Are you, storage, etc., can sit down with us, all of us, and have a conference which will be taped and recorded for all sides so that we can have documentation 
and we can work things out peacefully and non-aggressively. This is excessive and way aggressive. And, uh, you know, it's your choice. You know, you don't have to do this. But the, every, all 200 of my videos show that you people do not have a compassionate heart. You don't care. All you care about is money. Mr. Lyons, you aren't going to take your money with you, nor any of your good deeds that you pat yourself on the back with when you die. Mr. Hattenberg, you're not going to take anything with you either. Neither am I. It works to your benefit to be a nice person. And this is not a nice person. I fixed that bathroom door in there for David when he was working there last year. I helped fix, I told Chris Lyons, I helped fix a lot of things there and helped out. You don't really owe me anything. Except what? Maybe a thank you? This is not thank you. And we are not blocking your fire exit. We weren't blocking it when the stuff was out there, and we're still not blocking it. You people are nuts. And, and you have no compassionate reasoning at all. And that means that you cannot be trusted. So, you have a choice. You can work things out, or you can continue doing what you're doing. Now, it's late at night. I'm tired. I don't know why you people are doing this. It's still beyond me. Unless Adam is just trying to cover his kazoo. I can cause all kinds of trouble for you because I've got pictures, photographs of all kinds of things there that you do not want the public to see. So, Mr. Lyons, Mr. Hattenberg, I advise you to talk to your president. And because of all the other storage, et cetera, that you have, I advise you to sit down with me and Larry, and whoever else is going to be there, maybe even an attorney by tomorrow, because he's pretty pissed, and uh, have a workable discussion with us. You don't want to do this. As a matter of fact, we don't want to be there anymore. We really want to be out of there, but we need the, we need the time to be out of there. And uh, as far as the other storages involving other people, you're going to work those out with us too, any way you can. And then once we're out of there, all of us, including the people that the other tenants that you are involving in this as well, uh, when we're out of there, I don't care what you do with storage, etc. We want our stuff back. We want our property back. And uh, you, if you listen to all our other videos, you know that I'm a person who has been victimized by the city of Los Angeles, by all kinds of people. I never wanted to be in any storage. I had all my storage, and so did Larry. We had it in vehicles. The city came after us in our vehicles. Now, and, and both private and private, pro pri private and public property, we we have been harassed beyond imagination. And now you're doing this and lying on top of it. We never blocked your fire route. And like I said, there are fire violations there. That if I start calling the right people, you're not going to want this kind of problem. Trust me. You don't want it. So let's work things out tomorrow. Now, you won't be able to call me but because my phone doesn't have minutes on it. And I'm poor, remember? I'm poor and homeless, and I can only work for people and help people out. And here, I don't need to be there all the time. As a matter of fact, we got a first letter on the other side of the, of the aisles, on the co behind the Costco side, we got a letter warning us there about another situation with other uh, tenants that we're involved with. And they wanted to be out of there too, but uh, there's, a prob there's a problem there. So, a couple of problems. So, uh, I know you've seen some of the videos because I told your employees that I was going to do these videos. So, I'm sure you've seen them. And now you're ignoring them. And this video, you don't want to ignore. You don't treat your employees well because if you did, you'd work things out so that this video would never have been made. So obviously you don't want to work things out. You really want me to bring in the authorities, all the authorities. I'm not worried about the police, but you, storage, etc., you, I'd be worried about who I'm going to call. And believe me, I know who to call. And you don't want me to start making phone calls tomorrow because I guarantee you, before the end of the month, I'll ream you people. I'll, 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 I'll bust you like a ripe watermelon. So you don't want to do this. Let's work things out. I don't want to do it either because I don't like these authority figures either. Okay? 
You don't want him on your back. I don't want him on your back because I don't like him either. But if I have to use them, I will. Just like you keep threatening us with police at the end. Oh, the police will be called. Oh, my God. The end of the world. What are we doing? We're Al Capone. We're Elliot Ness. <laughs> We're Ma Barker. <laughs> God, you people really need to have your heads examined. You really are pushing this the wrong direction.